guys, I want to do a little video to go uh, through the group theory assignment. So there has been some changes to it. Um, I was talking with other faculty and they decided that we, uh, our theory um, assignment should be similar to theirs. So um, sorry if any um, confusion, but little a uh, few changes here. I think you'll find that this, um, these changes will make this much easier. So if you go to the assignments tab in Canvas, you'll get to the group theory presentation assignment and you'll see references there and some instructions and uh, 100 points and it has a little rubric here. So again, 40 points for part one, 40 points for part two and 20 points for the presentation basics. So we look in the announcements from a couple weeks back when the EBP presentation was due and you can go through that video about the presentation basics. Um, so a little overview here. Um, we just went over that provide um, part one is a basic overview of the healthcare theory. So um, I'm going to give you a list of who's um, assigned to what theory and there'll be seven groups and um, it, within your group you guys will um, do part one. So you provide a brief description of the theory you're assigned to. You'll uh, provide a reference of where this theory came from and how it was developed. Um, and then you'll do an assessment of the theory using box 6.1 in Paulette and Beck. And then to that, you'll um, add all your resources and references as uh, normal in APA format. Part two, you will think about the theory that you have and develop a research question. So you'll um, think about the variables in your research question. You'll think about who this theory might apply to. You'll tell us a little bit about this um, group or patient population that you're going to be um, applying this research question or doing this research on and tell us why you're going to do um, a little information about this patient population. You're going to state a research question as a PICO question. You're going to state the null and alternative hypothesis. You're going to identify the independent and dependent variable. And you're going to provide a rationale, rationale for why you were asking this question. So just for example here, say I wanted to use the trans-theoretical model um, that model says that people change their behavior based on their readiness to change. So uh, pre-contemplation, they're not aware, they have no intention of change. If they're in the contemplation stage, they're thinking, okay, there's a problem here, or maybe I should change. Preparation, they're getting ready to change. They're in the action phase, they're gonna make modifications in their behavior. They're in the maintenance, they've already made this um, change and um, they're doing all the things necessary to prevent relapse. And then termination, they're 100% sure that they will never go back to um, the way they were before they've made this change. So really the variables of this theory are the stages of change. Um, so whatever that those stages, whatever stage you're in, will determine your dependent your variable or your outcome variable, determine if you can change or if you can't change. So I'm thinking this might be good in a population of cancer survivors, maybe I'll say older adult cancer survivors who have specific recommendations for um, cancer survivorship care plans that include um, changing behavior. Um, so some of these are to maintain a healthy weight and to get um, the recommended amount of exercise. So I could say my hypothesis could say cancer survivors who are giving a um, trans theoretical based exercise and diet intervention program. So that would be my I and the cancer survivors are the P and um, 
they will adhere to exercise and dietary recommendations, so that's my outcome variable, more than those who do not get the intervention in the program, so that's my comparison group. So uh, in a um, null hypothesis is where you would say that there is no change between the two groups. Um, so a null hypothesis would be that cancer survivors who are given this intervention um, will have no difference in their outcomes or their adherence to exercise and dietary recommendations compared to those who did not get the intervention. The alternative hypothesis would be what I have here, that cancer survivors who get the intervention will indeed have more adherence to exercise and dietary recommendations. So there's some resources in the modules for you about null and alternative hypothesis. You can just have one slide where you state the null and the alternative. Um, please go to chapter six. There's a few theories there. And then in the little um, yellow text box in there, they will say, here's an example of how this, um, this theory was used in this intervention. So to find out who is in your group, you will go to the people tab. and group theory presentation. And you can look through who's in your group there and also their email will be in there. And what I have for, let's see, uh, group theory, um, the theories will be assigned. So group one will have Nola Pender's health promotion model. Group two will have Beck's theory of postpartum depression. Group three will have Kolkaba's comfort theory symptom management model. Group four, Michel's uncertainty and illness theory. Group five, symptom management model. Group six is theory of transitions. And group seven is Peplau's theory of interpersonal relations. So I will put this video and these um, assignment, this group assignment in an announcement and send that out to you. Um, and if, if you want to, we could have a, um, a Zoom meeting to go over this. If you have any questions, uh, just send uh, me an email and let me know. Okay, thank you.